Hey everybody, thanks for watching Commerce Kings. We're ready to rock and roll. And we have Mike Hussain on the call today. If there's anybody that knows e-commerce and knows virtual webinars and all that good jazz and creating like SaaS companies, this is the guy. So I am, I, like, I am honored to have you, Mike. Uh, you, I've looked up to you, I've mentored uh, from you from far away and just like watched what you've done and what you created and it's absolutely amazing. And so I always like watching you and, and Andy doing your, your videos and I'm like, man, how can I get a, how can I get a big, you know, wonder where this came from, right? Where, <laughs> yeah. where can I get a big screen TV and put it on, on something that makes, makes me look like I'm Mike and Andy. So definitely a, a mentor, man. And I, I look up to you guys. You guys do some cool stuff. So welcome to Commerce Kings. Thanks so much for having me. I, I love what you're doing. I've checked out some of uh, your previous podcasts. You've got some, some of my heroes on there. So, uh, <laughs> well, I, I hope to fill it with more heroes. That's uh, you know, there's, there's only one people to learn from those people who've, you know, chop down the trees and have made, have made the path. So I want to, I want to like just kind of dig in and, and talk to you. And, and um, I think a, a lot of people want these questions, uh, especially, especially for a guy of your stature, you know, like what you've been through a lot, you've done a lot, you've conquered a lot, uh, you've achieved a ton. What, but there's, there's gotta be times where there was just a moment that you're like, man, is it, is this even worth, worth my time? Cause I'm, I'm at my limit. Like I can't even stand this anymore. Well, I've, I've had a, you know, before I started online, I, you know, I went through a, a, a real, real tough uh, spot. Uh, you know, before online, I was in the car business. I don't know if you know that. No, I didn't know that. Were you selling cars? I was the, uh, the general manager of the second largest Hyundai dealership in the country. No and, joke. Uh, the, the largest Toyota dealership in the Northeast region. Um, <laughs> my dad was a car dealer. He owned a, a Mazda Peugeot dealership back in the okay. day. All my right. My brother was in the car business and so I went to school, you know, uh, I'm 50 years old, so that's going to put a little context, you know, when I say, uh, you know, back in 1983, when the Commodore VIC-20 came out and the Commodore 64, um, I was programming, you know, on that already. And then by the time computers came out into the schools, that was 1985. That was my senior year of high school. And I've got two years ahead doing computer programming. Uh, I, I couldn't, I can't write a line of code, you know, today on the web. <clears throat> But back then, you know, basic Pascal Fortran, I went to school for all this stuff. So, um, sorry about that. So I was writing, uh, I was writing code, uh, ended up uh, writing um, something to check my dad's lottery tickets for him because he used to <laughs> sleep. He'd buy, back then it was two games for a buck. Uh, and he would buy $20 worth of tickets. So he had 40 tickets and he would do it on Wednesday and Friday. And then on the news, it would come out at 1035 at night and he'd be back from the dealership like, like this, checking tickets, circling, and then just pass out. And he'd have a stack of tickets that were never checked for, oh, wow. for years. So, you know, we always used to joke we could be millionaires. We'd never know it. <laughs> so I wrote a, he played the same numbers every week. So I wrote a little program that wrote it onto a, a, a five and a quarter floppy disk back then and checked his numbers. And I ended up selling that to Lottery Players Magazine. So that's wow. how I... <clears throat> excuse me, I got a little tickle in my throat this morning. That's how I got the, you know, the passion for, you know, for computers. But back then there were no jobs for that type of stuff. Nothing like there is today. <clears throat> and my brother was doing very, very well in the car business. Uh, so in 1990, I shifted over to selling cars. Within three years, I became uh, uh, a sales manager. And then the toughest thing I ever went through it was in 1995 for two years, I was a sales manager and I had lost that job <clears throat> and I was applying for different jobs. Um, and I could go back to car sales in a minute. Those are the easiest jobs to get. Uh, you know, back then you'd make $30,000, but as a manager, you know, in 1995, you could be making 80 to a hundred thousand dollars. So a manager was a good job. That's and great. you know, it's, it's kind of like the thing, um, you know, in basketball, maybe like once you go back to the bench, you're a bench player. So, you know, I was more of a holdout and I couldn't get a job for, you know, for about four or five months and mm. it started getting into my psyche. I was, you, you know, in this uh, state of depression. I probably didn't even know I was in back then, but you know, now looking back, um, you know, I'd go two, three days without showering. I had the, <clears throat> the little beard growing, <laughs> falling behind on all my bills. My car is getting repossessed. I'm living in my dad's house. He was in Cupertino at the time. I was in Long Island. Um, I was with my previous wife before we were married. And I remember uh, we ran out of oil for four days and it was one of the most brutal winters. Uh, and we were in front of the fireplace, just burning my dad's prized encyclopedia set, you know, <laughs> and back then it was pretty, a pretty big deal to have you yeah. know, a nice encyclopedia set. So I'm burning all the books in the, in the library. And then all of a sudden, 
uh, the pipes just burst oh, completely. Uh, and the whole entire house was flooded with freezing water. Um, I you know, ruined the whole house. I had to call my dad. He had spent thousands to get it cleaned up and, and refill the oil for me. Um, and I remember going uh, and applying for a job. And just like we're talking right now, we're getting along. The guy's smiling. Hey, everything looks good, Mike. So I come back and I, you know, I tell you know, my, my, my fiance at the time, um, <clears throat> hey, I think, this is, uh, I think this is it. I'm finally going to be able to get the job again. And uh, I don't hear anything after two, three days. I, I call. I'm leaving a message. Um, it's about two weeks at this point, And I call the guy. And uh, he says to me, uh, who's this? And I said, hey, it's back then. My last name was Phil Zeme. Uh When I moved <laughs> online, I changed it to Phil Same. I knew it'd be, it'd be uh, difficult for people to ever understand where the French part, Phil Zeme, comes. So, Is that uh, how so, you actually say it? Phil Zeme? It, uh, Phil Zeme. Uh, if I go back to Long Island and walk into a car dealership where I used to work, everybody would be like, hey, Phil Zeme, what's up? <laughs> That's good to <laughs> no, know. What's with this Phil Same stuff? I don't, I don't get that. So um, now I don't even recognize Phil Zeme. But back, oh, to, uh, back to the story, he goes, uh, who's <laughs> this? I said, it's Mike Phil Zeme. I applied about two weeks ago. He goes, oh, are you the guy that's leaving all these messages? I said, yeah. He goes, don't you get it? We hired somebody else. And he just hung up the phone on me. Oh, damn. Um, so... Now my ex-wife is telling me, just go get a job as a salesman. And I'm telling her, no, it's, a, you know, it's the last thing I want to do. And um, I, I heard about the, the ability to, uh, you know, to go to a pawn shop and, and pawn something. So I had this, you know, back when I was making money in the car business, you know, I walked into a place and they said, well, what's your monthly income? And I was like 6000 a month. And they're like, well, you want to get a ring for three times the income. So I bought a ring, but I financed it. Uh, for $18,000, this most beautiful engagement ring, uh, way more than I could afford at the time. <laughs> and so <clears throat> I talk her into, let, you know, let's sell it. I mean, let's pawn it and we can get it back. Um, and at this time, I'm applying for a job and I'm getting a job, but we are so far behind on bills. Um, and it's going to be a while until I start even getting a paycheck from this place, the new place. So she says to me, no, we're not going to do that. There's no way. I said, look, it's just it's just a pawn shop. They'll hold it for 90 days. They're going to give us $5,000. It'll get us caught up on our bills. And then once I start making income, we can come back and we can buy the ring back. Um, so uh, I think, I think we, we got 5,000 for it and I had to pay him back uh, $8,000, you know, three payments at a time. <clears throat> I make the first payment. I make the second payment and the third payment. I'm like uh, $200 short. No big deal. Uh, they're closing in about a half hour. I walk in there with whatever, let's say $2,400 and I needed 26. It was something like that. So I, this real slime bag comes to the counter and he's like, all right, uh, so you've got the 2,600. And I'm like, well, I've got the 2,400, but I'll have the other 200 for you tomorrow. And he goes, that's not how it works. Uh, he says, this is your deadline. You've got to be paid in full. Otherwise it's my ring. And I said, no, this is my wife's, this is my wife's engagement ring. Uh, you, you know, and every time she walked in somewhere, or she, she used to be a service writer at a service counter. People would walk up and be, oh, let me see your ring. So yeah. right now we, we fill this thing with a cubic zirconia just to, you know, just to, so people wouldn't be like, hey, where's your ring? And uh, the guy says to me, um, no, I'm, I'm sorry, you're not coming back tomorrow. So I'm like pleading with him and begging with him. My oh, hands right. are like starting to shake a little bit. I'm starting to get so nervous. I, I didn't even expect that this would be a thing I didn't, you know. Hey, I'll get you the 200 tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and now time's running out. They're going to be closing in about 10 minutes. And he says to me, he says, listen to me, son, you don't understand. I don't expect you to pay. That's why I buy these things cheap. He says, this is the business I'm in. Either you get me $200 in the next 10 minutes or the ring is mine. And I didn't have it. There was no, no money in my ATM. No way I was going to be getting back in 10 minutes. <clears throat> so um, uh, I'm pleading with him. He brings security over. And they basically escort me out the store and I walk back into the car and I just sit there and my, uh, my fiance says, uh, so you ready to go get something to eat? And I'm just sitting there and I don't know what to say to her. And I just look over to her and I start crying and I'm like, they won't give us back the ring. Uh, we're $200 short. And it's, and I explained to her that it's their ring. And I just, I remember just reaching over just to touch her and she just like hit my hand away and said, stop, don't even, don't even touch me right now. You've, you've completely broken my heart. Now, obviously it wasn't a material thing. Like her heart was completely, yeah. completely broken. <clears throat> and I think at that day, that was, that was the lowest point in my life. Like I was a fraud. Uh, 
everybody knew she had this $18,000 <clears throat> ring. They didn't know the price, but it was a beautiful, uh, beautiful ring. And uh, for years, you know, even when I got online for, you know, for, uh, for years, she still continued to wear that ring. I used to say, let's go, uh, you know, let's go uh, replace. It. And she'd be like, oh, I don't need a ring on my finger to make me happy. But uh, the, the, the sense of embarrassment that she had to wear that ring and have, and have people say, oh, let me see your ring. Oh, it's so beautiful. Where'd you get it? And all that. It was like, it was something we just wanted to hide from. <clears throat> yeah. And the amount of disappointment that I gave to her, I think I said, uh, I, I think that low point of losing, uh, losing the, the oil, the water bursting, uh, can't get a job. Um, I'm just feeling like a loser. I've lost her engagement ring. That was probably the lowest point in my life. And, and it's, uh, it's made me, it's made me realize the value of a dollar and you know, how, um, you know, I, you know, people say to me all the time, um, Hey Mike, uh, we're going here. want to fly with me. And I'll be like, Oh, I'm taking Southwest. They're like Southwest. That's like getting on a bus with a connecting flight. And I'm like, you know, some things don't matter to me. You know, I'm going to, you know, if we're at an event, I'm going to stay at a nice hotel. I'll get a suite. I'll do certain things, but I, I, I just have this value for the, for, for money and understanding how important it is when, when things can get bad. And I've seen in this business and I've seen friends of mine, I've seen the million dollar launches. And then I've seen, you know, a year and a half later, um, they, you know, <clears throat> I think especially six, seven years ago, it was just about putting out a product and going to an event, meeting 16 people and having a mail for you. And tomorrow you're a millionaire. <clears throat> that doesn't work today anymore. You've got to figure out Facebook advertising, a brand, doing what you're doing, engaging with customers, uh, you know, stuff Billy Jean is doing. It's, it, these things are, are extremely important today. And, and for me, that was a, a life lesson that I never want to go there. And I've, I've gotten the emails from people. Um, uh, you know, you don't know what it's like for people like me. Uh, um, so I'll, I'll write them back and be like, you know, I've come from this. I, you know, I've, I've not only have I been at the bottom, I've been at like rock bottom embarrassment. Uh, and the car business was, was tough. It was long hours. And, um, you know, you'd have a, a, a manager that hired you, but if he got blown out, they fired the whole crew. You'd walk into work one day, you know, and all of a sudden be like, Oh, we've got, we've got a new team here. You're out of work. Uh, oh, so, yeah. you know, ups and downs in terms of pay was, you know, that was my life for 15 years in the car. Business. Wow. So, all right. So then whew, that's a low. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you get your highs today? What do you, what do you look to do? Um, you know, there's there certainly, there are a lot of things I could do better. Like, uh, you know, my wife loves to go to the gym and every day we're going to the gym at seven o'clock and every day at six o'clock, I'm too tired to go to the gym. So <laughs> I have a lot of places for improvement. I have, uh, I have something built in me. Uh, um, I don't, it's not that I want to win. I'm not, you know, competitive. I don't want to uh, win at anybody's expense. Um, but I love to have an idea that I can bring that I can bring to fruition. And to me, that's probably my biggest high, you know, and, and I'm sure you've had that, you know, that four o'clock in the morning thing when you're like, I'll, I'll remember this in the morning. And then, you know, at 4.15, you're like, screw it. You get it up. You're writing all the notes in your wonder list or something. And uh, mm -hmm. the next day you're having a meeting with everybody. Hey, here's what we're going to do. And putting these things into motion and, uh, <clears throat> and seeing that come true is just, you know, just exciting. So you're, so you're, you'd be, you'd be the visionary in the, uh, in the business. Definitely. Yeah. You're, you're totally like, here's the ideas. Here's all of these ideas. I'm the guy, I'm the guy who wakes up at like 3 a.m. has a really good idea. I'm like, that's so good. I'm going to remember it. I'm going to go back to sleep. And when I wake up, I'm going to write it down. And then of course I wake up and I totally, you can oh. feel it. I can sense it, but I don't know what it is. And then it takes, sometimes I'll get it back. Sometimes I don't, but uh, lucky for you, you go, you, you actually write it down. <laughs> yeah. I'll grab my phone and just, you know, put it into my notepad or Siri or something. Oh. It's an amazing thing how you can put something like that in your subconscious or like you have your real world, right? That you're always going through and thinking of ideas. And then your brain like comes up with stuff and that it's at 4 a.m. Like epiphany. I got an idea. This is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I've had I've had dreams. You know, I, I had a product mm. that was a flop, uh, but um, I mean, it wasn't a flop, but it, it I just couldn't compete with TweetDeck. Um, I had a I actually had a dream uh, because back in 2006, 2007, I was doing a couple of like um, <clears throat> what you would call. Uh, advertising exchanges where people, the more people did a certain action, the more they would earn points to advertise their things. You know, back in the day, uh, you would have screensaver things that, you know, uh, yeah. more, more time on your screensaver, the more credits you had. So I came up with this thing uh, that um, it was, it was a clone of like tweet deck, uh, sure. but, how, but how it worked was um, 
the, the more ads that you saw, uh, you know, we, we put ads in basically like a tweet deck clone and the more ads you saw, the more credits you would get. So it would encourage you to stay on Twitter and, and see feeds and <clears throat> the more ads displayed, the more credits you would get and it would show ads. And awesome. that came to me in a dream, but it didn't it actually didn't work very well. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Then th th that's what's cool about dreams is like, you feel, it feels like it's going to work or, or like one day I was holding a bag of money mm -hmm. and I, I like in the dream and I knew I was dreaming. And so I told myself, I'm going to, I'm going to grasp this money. I'm going to pull it through the dream. And it didn't work either. Then mm -hmm. I didn't have that. So how do you, how are you becoming smarter? How are you becoming smarter every day? Um, I buy, uh, I buy a lot of courses. Um, yeah. Okay. Like what kind of, what kind of courses? Uh, right now, um, uh, pretty much anything media buying, Facebook Good. advertising, retargeting. I could sit on a panel. I could go on the marketer's cruise and have a panel and I could talk about advertising all day long. The thing is, Trey, I've never touched a gear in Facebook. Um, so, uh, you know, my dad told me a long time ago, uh, inspect what you expect. Um, mm -hmm. And in the car business, uh, there were two types of uh, owners, you know, that were like, you know, 40, 50 years old, usually taking over for their dad. There were the, there were the ones that just, you know, <clears throat> were born with the silver spoon. They went to school, knew nothing about the business. And one day they were the owner of the dealership. And then there was the other type that was putting his kid, made him a porter, made him a sweeper, um, put him in the parts department, uh, but made him a salesperson, made him a lot boy, made him a prep man, uh, everything all the way up to finance manager, general manager, uh, and then even working in the office. And then um, this is a person that knew every single thing about the business. So when I got started uh, in October of 2002, when I bought my first domain, <laughs> uh, I was using Microsoft front, front page, the, the domain name, YouTube wasn't even purchased yet. So there was no video wow. online. Uh, <clears throat> if you wanted to get your photo online, it was basically, all right, what do I have a picture of myself? It's usually <laughs> like Sean Casey was using his high school photo. So was I, you know, yeah. um, and then you'd scan it. And now you got to figure out how do you get this thing online? And you didn't realize, you know, it's probably like two megabytes and back then it needed to be 16 kilobytes. So it's, mm -hmm. it's loading for 30 minutes on a page. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, so I learned that way how to build a page with front page. I learned, you know, PayPal thank you pages and then WordPress came out and I there's not a single thing online that I don't know um, I know pretty much pretty much everything but when it comes to uh, you know Facebook I'll, uh, I would have a meeting with the team would we hey go do this let's do these ads uh, but what I wanted to really know was you know, I want to know exactly how how to do this myself so right now I'm studying it myself mm -hmm. oh, that's awesome I love that so media buying so you're just doing like uh, internet buying, or are you doing like television, radio, newspaper? Uh, no, right now, just just the one thing in the business that I hired people to learn that I never knew. Uh, so okay. I just I just want to be I just want to know it so that I'm a gangster, so that if I'm managing it, I know it better than the people that are doing. It. All right. So then a question on that is how do you how do you how do you learn? Like if I was going to do a media, like if I was watching a course like that, I'd probably watch it at two x speed. Are you someone who goes like one X? Are you doing like during you running or like? Well, I'm two X. So, so the first thing I do is, is uh, I'll reach out to about six to eight people that are doing it right. Um, okay. So I reached out to, you know, my buddy, John Asaraf, mm -hmm. uh, Nick Unsworth, uh, Billy Jean, um, a couple of other people, my friend, John Cornetta, he's you know crushing it in, yeah. in e commerce. Um, and I just, I, you know, I'll say, Hey, look, you know, anything you want from me, let's do a, you know, I, Russell Brunson and I used to do these uh, every year. We'd call it a, a brain swap. Um, oh, and we'd go four hours with, um, you know, any question you want, anything, I'll show you anything, my funnels secret behind everything in my business, no holes barred and anything I want to learn from you, um, you mm -hmm. know, I'll ask you. And <clears throat> so right now uh, I've interviewed a couple of people, uh, you know, took, took some notes, learning some, you know, some pretty ninja stuff. I've got all the basics down, but I want to know like, you know, what some of the, the ninja stuff, obviously all the stuff now with many chat, um, you know, I reached out to Molly Pittman, you know, uh, you know, there's, there's certain, certain things that, you know, I want to get past the 80%. I want to know not just what's working now, but some of that ninja stuff that's working and then, and then put it all together and, you know, and make it mine. That's cool. I love that. Yeah. So that's how you, so that's, that's an easier and excellent way for getting knowledge. So you watch it two X. So you're also doing the brain stuff. So you're, you're not, you're not, are you buying the media? Like, are you buying the courses? Or are you going to the people who made the courses? No, I, I, well, so I bought, I bought courses, courses. So, you know, okay. you, uh, Udemy or Udemy, however you say it, they, they usually have yeah. uh, 
Dell that the course is like 199, but like yep. every six weeks you can get a course, all their courses for $99. So they had a Memorial day sale. So nice. I went and I picked up, um, you know, I was just adding to cart Instagram. Yeah, that sounds good. And you know, there's some pretty decent courses there and I'll go through those usually at like, um, uh, at, 2x like you said but the other thing i do I'm a, I'm a big apple tv user so what i'll tend to do is at night instead of watching tv i'll just sit back on my couch and i'll get four uh, i'll just go through a course in a night four hours on the couch and i'll just click next video taking notes taking notes and, and go <laughs> how do you do that on your apple tv i'm not that right uh, the, the udemy app uh you just you just log in oh you uh, add it yeah you just add it as an app on the apple tv i'm totally doing that Cause girlfriends always like, what do you want to watch? I'm going to now be like, Oh, this cool. There's this cool thing. Netflix. It's called, it's called this Udemy app. I hear it's got great stuff. She's going to, she's going to hate me now. Yeah. So, all right. So quick question is with all the businesses, with someone of who like your stature made millions of dollars with all kinds of different stuff. Where, where would you say that? Like, where, where do you park your cash? Like, do you do real estate? Do you do investing? Do you do um, exchanges or just put it back in the business, put it in your uncle's garage? Like what's well, uh, the, the, you know, the promise uh, for the business is always to try to keep six months cash flow in there. <clears throat> After okay. that, I'm the, uh, I'm the most boring guy to talk to about <laughs> investing. I don't do Bitcoin. Um, I've had a lot of bad luck with everything other than internet marketing. Uh, you know, I, I, I can get excited about anything back in the day before internet marketing was MLM and I, yep. I through the Mel Lucas and all that stuff, you know, there's some, some drive, <laughs> you know, uh, deep inside me for, you know, to be an entrepreneur. And when I see an opportunity, I, I think I believe too much of it. Um, so for me, I'm pretty conservative. Uh, I'll, I like to, I like to be involved in things that I can control. So the things that you do Trey or that I do, yep. I can measure it and I can say, if I can buy a lead for, for this, I can convert it for that. Um, yep. obviously, you know, in January is very, very tough to see, you know, what happened with Bitcoin and everybody saying, you see, you should have gotten in. And I'm like, you're right. And I, I, I'm not looking to be an I told you so person. I want that stuff to, to crush. I just don't want to get inside and invite, uh, you know, involved in something that I just don't know and I can't control. <clears throat> you know, that, it's, it's all speculative. So I don't know. I love that. You know, I, can, I can maybe have a software that says trade on green and stuff like that, but it, it's not for me. So for the most part, I've got, I've got a financial advisor. Uh, his name is Trevor. Um, you know, we put out a plan, this much money goes into this every month. This is risk capital. He handles it all for me. Uh, you know, uh, really good life insurance policy, uh, yep. for my wife. And, you know, other than that, it's pretty boring stuff. Pretty boring. So I love, I love the six months. Are you doing six months cash for every business you have or for like an over, like, how do you do that? Uh, well, uh, yeah, any, any, any LLC should have six months operating cash, uh, cash in it. So whatever your overhead, whatever your payroll, whatever that is six yeah. months, just in case if you're going downhill in a ditch, you got time to hopefully. Exactly. Yeah. Three right. months is good, but you know, I like to keep six months, you know, that's fantastic. All right. Well, I want to get into some real talk. That's cool with you. <laughs> I'd like to ask you, <laughs> I, uh, what, what would you say like right now is your biggest challenge a mike full same challenge well or phil phil some phil some may so <laughs> so there's I'll, I'll tell you something that's not not completely known so about okay uh, two years ago um i took a buyout in genesis digital it was uh paid over a couple of years uh i stay on as a consultant um andy and i are good friends i've got got a couple of deals with them that i'm working um doing some biz dev for them. Uh, so I got a pretty, pretty good buyout, but the toughest thing for me was, uh, so ever webinar, webinar jam and Kartra, they, they were developed by my programmers and, and then we hired more programmers obviously, but these were my guys from Romania that I've had since 2002. And then I had a lot of employees and some people at the help desk and everything like that. And so when I merged my companies, uh, with Andy and we created uh, Genesis digital with Hector and now Frank Kern's on board, um, when uh, when I sold at you know at that time ninety five percent of my shares, um, I also gave up all of my employees. So uh, so now I'm I'm building a new company as I told you. I'm partners with uh, with John Cornetta. We're starting a Shopify competitor. Right. Um, so cool. But uh, you know for the last and thank God for things like ClickFunnels or now Kartra where you know you can go in and you can build something pretty quick without having to need a whole team or an agency. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me it was a little bit tough. You know. Uh, 
the way I like to get an idea and run. Mm-hmm. So I'd get an idea, run and get in my office and be like, oh, I don't even have anybody to execute. Like, <laughs> I was literally a one man show again. So, wow. So for me, the biggest challenge was do, do I hire, it was a chicken and the egg th- uh, thing. Do I start hiring a team and I, and I hire a team and I've got nothing to give them? Or do I start building something myself? But then as I'm doing it, I'm like, shit, I need a team. Uh, and I always had a, had employees or contractors. I never, I was never a big outsourcer guy or, uh, you know, people that would, you know, uh, you know, go, go and, you know, we had people in the Philippines, but for me to just go say, I'm just going to go freelance this, it wasn't my thing. So it was a little tougher for me to, to get an idea and execute it now. So I decided, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look for people that, that have good opportunities and are really missing the marketing and, and, uh, you know, partner with them. And that's, that's what I'm doing right now. That's, uh, so I met, we mentor with Jay Abraham mm-hmm. and that's been a treat as well. Cause that dude is just super smart man. and, uh, it's, that's exactly what his ascension is. He has his mastermind or well, he has his like little events, right. That he's doing around like China mastermind of 200 K. And then above that is a percentage of the business. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's kind of a genius way because he's making people pay, uh, him to be, to be interviewed for him to interview him. Really? Right, yeah. You know, because he gets to see inside the books, inside the marketing. How how's the CEOs like? Are they you know not cool people? Are they scammy? Are they good good citizens? You know, whatever. And then at the end of it, it's like, okay, well, you guys are great. It was fun working with you. Now, do you want to go into business together? And I get a percentage, three percent, five, ten, whatever it is. Yeah. And it's it's super smart. And it's super brilliant. I love I love that. And the other thing that he kind of talked with you, what you just said is, you know, I saw John's doing this great thing, and the marketing was was something that I could help with. Mm-hmm. And so I said, Hey, let's, let's join a team. And like, that's yep. a beautiful thing. That's where people, that's where people become really wealthy is, you know, joining, joining alliances. We, we were on a phone call. Get this. This is crazy. We got, we called this guy. So we're all about joint ventures. We're all about joining up and teaming up. Like we run our guns and ammo stuff that do the train well and thing, but we're also there to help and provide, but also make it a win-win situation. Mm-hmm. To give you a great example is like sharing uh, leads. So if you had a, um, uh, a prepper list, okay, a survival list. And I said, hey, Mike, would you want to do a giveaway together or some sort of affiliate offer together? Uh, and, you know, obviously, if you do that, if you send traffic my way, then I'm going to probably get some of the people that are on your list. That's the yeah. whole concept, except I'm paying you out an affiliate. I'm talking to the choir, I know. Yeah. But, at the end, but at the end of the day, we made this phone call to this guy and said, hey, let's do this big thing. And he's like, you know, he's like, I don't, I don't want to share, I don't want to share my people. I don't want to share my list. And he was so, so yeah, scarcity mentality. It's I was like, like, holy, like, Dude, you're not, and he's, he's doing well for himself. You know, he's, he's making quite a bit of money, but at the end of the day, like, like you said, that million dollars, it's nice for that launch. It's nice for that long haul, but there's, there's those cyclical turns that Absolutely. comes that day. Dude, the people that you whiplash in the back and said, ah, you're, you know, you're not my kind of guy or I don't want to do that. Dude, that's, those are the dudes you should be running to or there to help you come along the same way. Yeah. I mean, there's that expression, you know, that you know, all the, all the boats rides uh, with the tide, they say that for a reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, uh, I've been, I've been around a lot of abundant people in this industry. Uh, every now and then there are some people that are like, uh, no, you know, I don't share my list. And <clears throat> I'll say to them sometimes, you know, your email list is not in a vacuum. You know, <laughs> you're crazy to think that like you have these leads that nobody else has and they only listen to you and you're the only person that hits their inbox every day. It's, right. uh, you know, you know they, they're probably on somebody else's list or, or even my list already. It's just about endorsement. When I say something good about you and you say something good about me, it's, uh, you know, it's just good for both of us, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, we can only, we, we'll be fine without each other. We'll be better together. And that's yeah. the way you got to look at it, you know. What, so to give you, so to make that true uh, with Click, so we use ClickFunnels, as you know, and we'll do uh, some sort of giveaway or opt-in or some joint venture with an other email list. And so all we ask is for name and email. And then when we do the contact export to, do, to push to our call center, we get to see that CSV live. And what's interesting is the CSV, probably usually 10 to 15% of that list comes with name, address, phone number, credit card information. And the reason is, is because they've already bought from us. Yeah. Their list was already our list. Right, but what's yeah. cool is they double opt in, you know? Yeah. So, they, so they're back. So it's yeah. like, oh, hey, welcome. It's been a minute. So it's, it's pretty cool. What would you say is your, this is a big question, but have you found your purpose? Do you feel? Um, I actually, I actually do. I, you know, uh, again, I'm 50 years old. You know, I'm sure you talk to a lot of people, young guys like Russell, I mean, kids probably still 21. Uh, <laughs> just, you know, age. I knew, I knew Russell, you know, when his email address was money for college, <laughs> you know, so, um, 
for some people, especially the way the world is today, you know, you can get into e-commerce. Um, you know, you're seeing what's happening with YouTube with these influencers, these, these ninja kids making 500 grand a month on Twitch. And, you know, I want to make sure I don't become the old man going, that's crazy. Somebody making half a million dollars a month playing video games. I get it. I know, I know what it's like. But for me, I really did have that previous life till I was 37 years old, you know, working 75 hours a week. Um, my, my previous thing before that was going to school and my passion for, for computers. Um, so I feel like I found my purpose when I got online. This is, that was something I said, I'm, I, I'm born to do this. And then from there, um, you know, it's about, you know, it's about, you know, giving back, trying to, you know, uh, you know, work with charities, you know, um, my dad was born in Haiti. So we do a lot of work in Haiti over the years, uh, built lots of houses and churches and schools that's and cool. things like that. And that's, that's pretty much uh, what we try to do. And I try to, I try to work with charity ward anytime, anytime I'm doing something, if I can try to remember, Hey, how can we, how can we, um, you know, we can put a, a charity element into this. And I always like to put it more on the back end. Um, I know there's a lot that can be done on the front end. Um, I just feel a little weird saying to somebody, and when you buy this, a portion, a portion of the charities goes, you know, uh, 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 goes to charity. I, I, I always want to be careful that people aren't trying to say, oh, he's just doing, doing this to make himself look good or something. And I, and I understand how that could look. So I try to put it more on the back end on the final end of the process and say, hey, thanks for doing this. And, you know, hey, if you'd like to uh, do this, this is something that, you know, that, uh, that can help a lot of people. There's yeah. a link below, you know. That's cool. I love, what we'll do is we'll, we'll tell them after the fact. Mm -hmm. So they've purchased and then we're saying, hey, by the way, you help save whatever, you know, or, or, or you, you help build a church or you help build a university or appreciate you, yeah. you know. Didn't even know it, but you're, you're part of this, this big thing. So last, last question. I know you got to go. Um, what would you say? So you're 50, so 40. So, okay. So you'd still be in the car business, right? So 20 years ago, if yeah. we do this exercise at one of the events I have, and it's really cool where we like go and meet the future you mm -hmm. and you get to talk, have a conversation. It's kind of like one of those psychological things. What would you, if you, if you had the chance and opportunity to go back and talk to yourself at the age of 30, what, what do you think you'd, what do you think you'd say to yourself? Wow. That's, that's a very, very good question. All right. So uh, age of 30, um, right. Be, let's say right before I'm, you know, I'm starting an online business. Yeah. Let's set the scene. So you're 30. So that's, uh, 2000, no, that's 1997, right? Yeah. Yeah, I want to I want to try to keep the answer within my life experiences, right? You know, uh, on the extreme end of that, you know, I don't want to say something like you know, invest in Google, right? You know, so, <laughs> yeah. it's not going to be something like that. Um, for me, uh, it would probably be. I would definitely push myself to the understanding of software uh, sooner, um, and understanding that building building a hundred million dollar company is is possible, and focus on on one thing or, you know, a complimentary things like webinar jam ever webinar that was building Genesis digital, a brand. Um, I think what happened early on when I got started was product million dollar launch and I launched these incredible brands, but I had the next big idea mm. and I was chasing ideas that were million and $2 million launches over and over and over. But you go back and look at those brand brands. Some of them were very good brands. My very first brand butterfly marketing, where is it today? Right. You know, you know, did I, did I, I let that go for the next thing, the seven figure code at the time, all these, these different things. And it took me a while to realize, focus on one thing, make it better, keep the competitors out by just making it better. Uh, you know, back then we didn't know about SAS. We were building scripts and we, we would like a WordPress type thing. You'd buy it and install it on your own server. So I, I for me, I would t t tell, uh, tell my earlier self, build a software company. Uh, uh, and, and I don't think I realized how, and I don't want to say this, you know, uh, sounding ridiculous, but how easy it, it really is to build a hundred million dollar company with software. It's not as easy in the other places, especially um, if I was building something around myself with my brand, it's a little tougher to sell, you know, uh, unless you're somebody like, uh, like Martha Stewart or something, you can build something and step away from the brand and it's still you know, you built such a good name around it. But when you're Tony Robbins and you're the personality, people are buying Tony and, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where that company can go without Tony. Will it, 
will it be the same? It's always going to you know, be missing that Steve Jobs magic that Tony, you know, he's a time teller. He's not just a clock maker. Uh, so uh, for me, it would be software. That's amazing. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's wild how that works. And you're, cause you're telling, like, let's go back. Cause I'm, I'm 33. So that was three, that'd be three years ago uh, that you'd be talking to me if, if I was you. Yeah. And Wow, man, you're young. You got your whole life ahead of you, man. I, oh, dude, it's I, just I'm amazing how, how many eyes. So same for you. you we, saw, we all got lots of years. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's like saying $100 million. I was doing insurance. I was making 60 grand a year. And for someone to even say I was going to make a million dollars, let alone 120 grand a year, like it's, it's, it's so far-fetched, you know, almost unbelievable because it's, so, it's such a grand number. The, the big thing is everybody, like you, you look online, all the forms, everybody's like, I want to make a million bucks. I want to make a million bucks because that's where their head's at. And, and they'll make it because that's where yeah. they set their target to. That's, that's, that's just the bottom line. I'm probably crazy for not thinking to do a billion. Uh, yeah. Because when you, when you uh, think about doing a billion, you start saying, well, I need to talk to and interview billionaires. And, and there's a different process for making a million than there is for 10. The wheels go off when you're making a million and trying to get to 10. But making 10 and going from 10 to 50 is even tougher because, you know, that's about having C CEOs and CTOs and, and marketing and, you know, and somebody that's doing it all in their own business. They'll, they'll make the same amount of money at 5 million that they make at 20 million. But at 20 million, they're running around going, this is ridiculous. If I'm not the only one that does this, nothing gets done. And they start like pulling their hair out yeah. because it's, it's a different type of business. So yeah. for me, especially Trey at 50 years old, I'll watch, um, you know, I watch all entrepreneur stuff on YouTube and different things like that. And mm -hmm. I was, uh, I don't remember the name of the guy right now, but he's the uh, inventor of a company called SoftBank. Um, SoftBank. Look, look them up. I'll just look up a YouTube video. How big is SoftBank? This guy is known as <clears throat> the, um, the Bill Gates of Japan. He, he creates uh, the ARM uh, chip. He invests, you know, owns 15% of Uber, all, all these different things. The guy's just like blown everything up. But his story is incredible. But when I look at the stuff that he did, I'm like, okay, he was already a billionaire at 37. So I think the most important message I could leave for your, your listeners uh, and the people watching this podcast is when you look around and you go to Manhattan and you go to San Francisco and you see these bridges and Golden Gate bridges, um, and, and when I can have perspective at 50 years old, um, most of these things were designed and built by people younger than me. So the, everything that's great in this world was done by regular people, most of them our age or younger than us. Um, Sony, look, you, know, you, you look up Sony, you look up Toyota, you look up Honda, you know, Steve Jobs, all these different things, Bill Gates. Um, so if we, if we look around and we, we, we drive down a shopping center and we're seeing a subway, that's an entrepreneur. You're seeing you know, a, 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 what do they call it? Chipotle. All these things are entrepreneurs. Success is, is all around us. In my opinion, it's, it's, it's more popular than actually you know, um, people being unsuccessful. So at, at one point, people have to say, well, why not me? It's, there's no luck here. It, there's processes, there's learning, there's going through the steps, uh, finding out where the minds are so you don't step you know, on the minds in the minefield, learn from smart people like you, um, and set a goal and just really work towards it. Uh, there's not that much more magic to it. You know? And that's why I said back in the day, becoming a millionaire doing a launch, it was, a little, it was easy. It was almost too easy back then. Mm -hmm. uh, I would see you know, a 23-year-old kid you know, back in the ClickBank days, and he would, uh, <laughs> he would, he'd, he'd do his million-dollar launch. And the next thing was uh, you know, uh, Maserati or Aston Martin. And I'd, and I'd be like, no, money in the bank. Dude, you, <laughs> can, you know, I drive a Honda Accord, um, a Honda Accord uh, touring turbo, nice little car and everything like that. I've had the Corvette Z06. I've had the, uh, you know, the Hummers. I have had the Nissan GTRs. I've had, uh, you know, uh, Lexus, Land Cruisers, like you name it, everything. Uh, I won the Hummer H2 from, uh, from Russell. But nowadays, <laughs> I'm like, um, yeah, you know, I'll have a Mercedes, but, you know, my Honda's just as good, that, that type of stuff. I've, I've, the, the days of going out and blinging are just uh, behind me. And I think that may come with age because I went through it. I'm not telling somebody not to do it. I needed to yeah. have all that stuff. But after that, at the end of the day, it was like, all right, look, now that I've had that, I just want to, I just want to focus on work, you know, but more anyway. Right. Changing lives. That's it. That's yeah, amazing. Changing lives. That's it. Mike, I, uh, I appreciate your time. This has been profound. This is amazing. Like, thanks for having me. Charlie. I'm going to go, I'm going to go look at all that stuff. SoftBank is amazing. Some, like I loved how, I think it was your father's quote, mm -hmm. inspect what you expect. Yeah. That was good. That was, that was absolutely amazing. So 
Ladies and gentlemen, Mike will say, check him out. Uh, follow this guy. Where, 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 do you, where do you want people to come say hi to you at? Uh, right now, they can just go to MikeFilsame.com. There you go. Mike.com? Yep. It's the best domain there is. <laughs> MikeFilsame.com. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate you. Thanks. Bye, everyone.